Hey guys, welcome back. Well, today we're going to do something pretty special, I think so anyway. Uh, if you know my channel, you probably know that I have a second channel about photography. And I was explaining a technique there and some 3D folks looked at it and they thought it was a complete game changer. So that's why I'm doing this video for you guys. Hopefully this tip is helpful. Here we go. All right, guys, well, as you can see, I'm in Photoshop and I loaded up this uh, photo. Uh, but keep in mind, this is not a photography tutorial. This is all about 3D, trust me, okay? All right, so I loaded up this image just as a reference. This could be a rendered shot of a scene or anything other 3D related that's captured in, let's say, a JPEG image. Well, the thing is, if you want to organize your files, you are typically bound by the location where you save it. So the name of the folder or the subfolder, or let's say the name of the file itself. But there are limitations because uh, if you're anything like me, you probably have multiple renders of the same scene, but using different settings. So you got cameras in different positions. You are using different light settings, maybe different renderers, all that kind of cool stuff, right? So how do you keep track of all that? Well, that's the thing. In photography, you look at EXIF data. So metadata captured in an image, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if I go up to a file and I go to file info, you got all of these tabs down here. So camera data and whatnot. Now in photography, you would have information in here, something like, okay, I use that lens, that camera, that shutter speed and so forth. But in the case of uh, 3D and 3D renders, you can do the exact same thing, but you can customize that. So what I've done is I took this image, went into the basic data and typed in camera blue. Now, that doesn't really make sense. That could be render one or render one using an area light or certain filters or certain settings or certain renderers. So basically anything specific to this uh, file that I cannot capture simply in the description of the file, all right? So what I did is I saved out this identical image right here and in one uh, image, I changed this to camera red, camera white and camera blue, all right? So, and obviously I gave them different names. So I think it was I1, I2, and I3. Now, what I wanna show you is that you can use that metadata to find information back on saved files. So here we go. All right, guys. Well, I created a folder called uh, Organized Renders. And again, I just got three files right here, but let's say they're 75 or 80 or whatever, right? Now, I wanna specifically uh, search through these images based on the information that I added in that basic data. Now, you can see that these have um, names that are pretty similar, not a lot of information going on there, but let's say I want to find the file where I used camera red in the render, okay? So keep in mind, number one here is red, this is white, and this is blue. So let's say I want to look for camera red, I should end up with this image as a search result, right? So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to look for camera red and hit enter. And there you go. I number one. If I decide to go in here and do white, I should get number two and I do. And if I want to get blue, I get number three. So you get the point and you see how this works, right? Now you can use this in many, many different ways. You can use this. Let's say if you are doing research for a 3d project, you need to set up. You can do this for your rendered images. You can do this for render passes, right? So hopefully this little tip is helpful for you guys. I thought it was pretty cool. And um, you know, I see a lot of people using it nowadays, okay? So have fun with that. If you've got any questions, let me know as always. And that said, uh, thank you very much for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.